Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, for and Watch. I've got an update for you guys on this pretty big, severe, multi-day severe weather event that we've got unfolding across the North Central Plains. And then we will see some of the storminess uh, enter the Ohio Valley and the Northeast, as we could see um, an elevated tornado threat. Not, you know, just slightly elevated, not too, too high, but we will definitely see a mix of uh, severe weather um, throughout the rest of this week. So we've got very, very intense uh, heat out here in the southwestern U.S., even though we do have um, a, f a few areas on un uh, under some rainfall this morning. Um, but, you know, it's been very, very hot to the point where uh, we, we saw, you know, heat uh, real fields that have been going uh, past 115 degrees. It is brutally hot out there. We've seen temperatures over 110 degrees. It's just crazy. It is extremely hot right now. This is probably the, uh, the going to be the hottest it's going to be throughout the rest of the year. It's just so, it's so crazy how hot it is. Because, you know, you realize it is July. So it's pretty much the hottest month of the year. So, you know, when you see a heat wave like this in the month of July, you pretty much, that kind of tells you that this is what the summer heat we're talking about is. And uh, after this, after this heat, finally dies down a little bit that'll probably it be it for the rest of the year but you know we also do have a lot of storms that has been charging up into um areas that were flooded uh, a few days ago we saw those catastrophic floods out there in vermont and we have more rainfall on the way throughout the rest of this week so it's going to be pretty dangerous as we could see another dangerous flood event unfold across uh, the, the Northeast, just because we still have some floods out there. I mean, it, it, it flooded, the area was flooded so much that there's still, there was so much flood water on the roads that there still is for some areas. And the, uh, the lake, the rivers and, um, lakes are like the, the, the water level are still really high and some of them are actually still at flood stage. So any more rainfall is not a good sign. And we are about to see a, a, a quite a bit of rainfall fall in right in that area but you know i think this would be the main uh this is probably going to be the main topic of today which is our severe weather event unfolding across the north central plains um and here it is right now we already got some storms firing across montana and the dakotas this is going to continue once we get into those afternoon hours of today and then this is going to push off to the east um, and eventually impact parts of the northeast and mid-Atlantic. So we're going to be moving on to our alerts. And you can see that what we've got going on is, you know, you don't really have any um, severe weather alerts uh, for, for, for now. But if you go down into the south, the southern U.S., I mean, it's just crazy. All these heat advisors, warnings and watches. You've got a... Uh, just a regular heat advisory for a lot of south southeastern Kansas, parts of central Kansas as well. Uh, a lot of southwestern Missouri, uh, parts of northern Arkansas, and then pretty much all of Texas is under a at least a heat advisory. If you go into central Texas, you see that you have that excessive heat warning. That does include a lot of Oklahoma, that, like pretty much all of Oklahoma, as you only have about five counties outside of that um, excessive heat warning that aren't in it in Oklahoma. Um, and then you also do have a heat advisor just north of the panhandle of Texas into parts of southeastern New Mexico. So you guys will see some of that heat as well. Parts of southern Louisiana, this also does go into, this heat advisor also does go into the western edge of Tennessee. Down into the panhandle of uh, Florida, you have in the Miami area, you do ha area you do have a heat advisory, and also for that area of northern Florida. Um, and then this is probably where the you know the most the hot the you know the most intense heat is, which is going to be in Southern California. You can see that all of Southern California and all of Central California is under this excessive heat warning, except obviously for the Sierras. But you know it's crazy. It's like, it's so hot, but the area is just massive. It's like, it's like one of those heat waves that are including such a big area that you hear like the entire state of you know, California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, under heat advisories, watches, and warnings. Um, but you've got an excessive heat watch 
for north parts of Northern California, scattered parts, scattered counties of uh, Northern Nevada, and then a lot of the east, the western edges of Nevada and southern edges of Nevada are under that excessive heat warning. Um, they also do have a air quality alert for parts of the Delmarva area into Long Island, New York City, parts of New Jersey, and then I believe this does include all of Rhode Island and parts of southeastern Massachusetts. So we're going to be moving on to our temperatures for today. And you can see that we've got going on, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty nice actually. They're out today for the northwestern US. I know yesterday we had the MLB uh, 2023 All-Star Game, and it was very, very nice side, very beautiful. I didn't go, but um, it definitely looking on, watching it on TV, it looked very, very comfortable out there. But, you know, again, today you're going to have a very nice day, waking up to 70 degrees, 80 degrees across the region. Uh, we go into, you know, where the hottest part of the day is um, for you guys out northwest, um, and you're in the 90s for some of you, down into parts of southeast, southeastern uh, Washington State, but if you're closer up to uh, Seattle and kind of like closer to the coastline, you'll stay pretty, pretty cool and get into the 60s. Maybe even some of you could get down into the 50s. So it's going to be a little chilly um, for some of you closer up to Canada or closer to the coast, but it'll be pretty uh, warm and nice for the rest of this week. Uh, we go to the southwest of U.S. There's that brutal heat, guys. I mean, I'm talking like 111 degrees along the southern border of California and um, Arizona. So it is just, it's intense. And it's really, it's it's been like this for a very long time. So it's it's kind of scary to see this, the, you know, the heat this bad, but for such a long time. And then you can see all, pretty much the entire state of Texas is over 100 degrees. You're seeing uh, in the DFW area, highs than 108 degrees, 107 um, if you go into extreme northeastern Texas, you do have uh, temperatures slightly below 100 degrees, um, which is lucky. Um, but you also do have in, across the panhandle of Oklahoma and then central Oklahoma, you see mainly upper 90s. Some of you guys will get over 100 degrees, especially closer to Texas. You can see 108 degrees here. Uh, but if you, if you guys are closer to like Oklahoma City, in that metro area, you're probably going to be in the lower to mid 90s today. Maybe you'll touch 100. Um, North Central U.S. Pretty nice day overall, um, although it might be a, a little, you know, it's gonna get it's gonna get stormy today. Um, but it might get a little humid outside, so that air is gonna feel really sticky, um, especially with those mid 80s and lower 90s for your temperatures. But some of you will also stay into the stay in the 70s and 60s and hopefully you can enjoy the day with some nice weather um you guys in the southeast um we'll go put it back to 2 p.m um you guys in the southeast if you're in the ex deep southeast you're going to be in the 90s and 80s for most of you guys um if you're in the panhandle of florida closer down to cuba um if you're closer to the gulf of mexico i just want to point this out you're probably going to see more of the heat, but there will be some tiny pockets scattered around that area of some cooler air just because of these sudden surges of moisture coming up from the Gulf. Um, so just, you know, be alert for that. Um, but you do have widespread 90s and 80s for most of you guys in the southeast. Even you guys in like the Carolinas will be in the lower 90s for today. Uh, Tennessee Valley, you guys will be in the upper 80s and lower 90s. Um, they do have a few pockets of cold, cooler air you can see 75 degrees it's very nice outside for you guys in northwest northeastern uh, louisiana and parts of southern mississippi you guys are going to be in the lower 80s um for you guys in the northeast you do have a pretty nice day today it's going to be pretty humid though um so the air might feel a little sticky but you know you got temperatures ranging from the upper 70s into those lower and mid 80s and if you're closer to the coastline so like here in long island new york city you could get o over 90 degrees so it's gonna get pretty hot um considering you know how you know how it how it's been feeling in the past couple of days you've been in the 80s and now you're all of a sudden you're in the 90s so it's gonna be pretty hot if you're closer to the coastline you can see all the way up into maine you're at 90 degrees so you know just be alert for some pretty uh intense heat so we're going to be moving on to our NAM3KI model for, I believe this is the North Central. 
And we're just going to be breaking down what's going to be happening with today's storms. We have an enhanced risk in place for severe weather today, but we really have to break down kind of where and what these storms are going to be producing and where they're going to be producing. So starting around 9 a.m. this morning, you had a pretty local, a pretty uh, nice size uh, storm right here, um, including a lot, all of central Iowa and parts of southern Minnesota. So, you know, you do have a low pressure center. So it's a, it's a pretty organized storm as of this morning, but we're going to skip ahead to where we are now. So let me see. It's about 1 p.m. Eastern time. And you can see that the storm has uh, shrunk since uh, the, since what it, the status it was at this morning. So this tells us that the storm actually has been weakening in the past few in the past few hours. Um, well, what we're pretty much where we are now is the most intensive storms are moving across uh, the just west of Chicago, um, and they're moving towards the northwestern Illinois and Iowa borderline. So we could definitely see you could definitely see some damaging wind gusts, maybe some small hail out there in Chicago, um, that metro area. And then you do also have some pretty intense storms down into parts of southwestern uh, Illinois, or so down, sorry, down into parts of uh, southwestern Wisconsin. So you could definitely see some some scattered uh, severe thunderstorms throughout, you know, the rest of this afternoon. But I think the main threat of severe weather will definitely be, you know, the later we get into today. Um, but we still see these storms persist um, once we get closer to those evening hours, again to 3 p.m. The most of the storms are going to be up uh, up here in southern Wisconsin, uh, southern Wisconsin, um, and then they just move across the region. But you know, as they move, watch how this low pressure, this low pressure center, the number drops. You know, and the the lower the number of low pressure, the stronger the storm is. And what low pressure is considered uh, below a thousand and five millibars, you're already down to nine hundred ninety eight millibars. So this is definitely a organized and strong storm considered uh that that's what we would consider it for you know one of these just regular summer thunderstorms but you know you could see that these purples and pinks these are extreme uh downpours and rainfall and also some relatively large hail so you could see some hail move uh, a, a hail storm with a pretty nice size hail core move just west of, or just east, I should say, of the Chicago area. So watch out for that. And you could actually have a damaging wind gust, get damaging wind gust um, kind of potential associated with those same thunderstorms. But uh, this is still going to move through the uh, approaching the Ohio Valley. Most of the storms are down here in southwestern Michigan. But man, are they going to be producing a lot of hail. Uh, damaging wind gusts are, I think, really hail and damaging wind gusts are going to be the main threats for today. But if I had to put my money on what threat would be the highest, it's going to be damaging wind gusts. I just, these storms, the characteristics of these storms really have been telling me, though, that these storms that they're going to be producing damaging wind gusts. But, you know, this continues moving throughout um, the rest of today. We're getting into the early morning hours of tomorrow. Uh, I mean, this is pretty much the middle of the night, and these storms are finally starting to weaken they've considerably shrunk um throughout the overnight hours and then we get into the middle of the night um then we also do have another secondary line of storms a branch of storms moving down into parts of southeastern kansas and into parts of central uh, missouri now this one also does have its own low pressure center right here at 1002 millibars so we'll have to watch out for that but you know, these storms could definitely get severe and they could get pretty intense, as well as these storms over here, which have restrengthened once we get into those uh, later morning hours. Even though it's still, you know, pretty much the middle of the night, we still, once we get more closer to those late morning hours of tomorrow, we will start seeing this intensification with the storm, as we do have a 999 millibar low pressure uh, centered right over central uh, Michigan. That moves off to the northeast, impacts parts of uh, upstate New York and Vermont, places that uh, got hit by some devastating flooding yesterday. Uh, I think Sunday. Yep, pretty Sunday and Monday. Um, and then we have another a leftover round of storms that's going to be charging through parts of northern Nebraska. Um, those won't be severe because they're probably just going to diminish once you get into those afternoon hours of tomorrow. Um, and then the next round of storms is probably going to impact 
you know, not only until, you know, the middle of the night tomorrow night. And we start seeing another branch of storms move down from Canada into parts of mm. central and southern, uh, looks like Minnesota. And then this will slowly weaken um, once it, once you get into those uh, those morning hours of, I think this would be, if today's Wednesday, I think. Uh, yeah, today's Wednesday. So this would be the early morning, the late morning hours of Friday. Um, and then you do have, you know, it's, it's a pretty big storm, but it's not that organized and it's pretty weak. But there is going to be a couple of thunderstorms moving north of uh, Michigan and Wisconsin. Um, and then you've just, just got some scattered, uh, intense thunderstorms throughout the region for the rest of Friday. Um, but then you do see another line of storms. This strengthens, and this one's going to be severe. I think this one could definitely be severe, impacting parts of the panhandle of Oklahoma, mainly central Kansas, though. Central and southern Kansas, you guys could get hit uh, you know, throughout the evening hours of Friday. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty intense. Damaging wind gusts are going to be associated with those storms. Um, and then that's going to be pretty much it for the rest of the day. So we're going to be moving on to the South Central U.S. Um, starting off around 9 a.m. this morning, you had some pretty intense storms move across the southern areas of Arkansas. And then these have been growing um, throughout the morning hours and afternoon hours of today. Um, but we're already getting into those evening hours. And we still don't see that much activity unless you're closer off to the southeast. You see... More of this Gulf moisture spreading into these storms, fueling these storms uh, down here in southern uh, Tennessee. And then scattered storms across um, the Mississippi and Alabama region. And then um, for the rest of today and tomorrow, you know, you're getting into like the overnight hours of tomorrow. And that's your first real round of storms that's going to be moving through. This is the overnight hours of tomorrow night. You're starting to see this branch of storms move down into parts of southern uh, Kansas and southern uh, southern Missouri, and then we will see some of this some of the storm action uh, enter parts of northeastern Oklahoma, and it could impact parts of uh, you know Oklahoma with areas closer to the Oklahoma City metro area. So watch out for some pretty intense storms if you're living in Oklahoma City. Um, uh, but these could definitely drop some pretty, a pretty big size hail and produce some damaging wind gusts. That was your round one. Um, and then we skip ahead to round two. We see some more, we see some more storms, like a ball of storms fire up across Northern Texas, a little bit closer to the panhandle of Texas, panhandle of Texas. This won't really do much, um, until we see another line of storms form. And this one is probably going to elevate that. Uh, damaging wind threat, but you also see that these appear to be all supercells, and they are lining up, um, but they are pretty spread apart, so this actually tells you that there could be a tornado threat with this. So watch out for a elevated, slightly elevated tornado threat anywhere from like late, you know, like the evening hours of Friday into those really early morning hours of Saturday. You could see a, a slightly elevated tornado threat. Um, but we don't, we've ran out of mod, model run time for the rest of Friday and Saturday. So we're going to be moving on to our Storm Prediction Center and our SPC. And so basically, these are our severe weather percentages. And you're up to in, enhanced risk level 3 out of 5. And you can see it's for that same area of southwestern Kansas and Missouri. So it's looking like that our weather forecast forecasters here at the Storm Prediction Center have a lot of confidence in those uh, in that line of storms, that branch of storms that we saw moving down into parts of southern Missouri and Kansas, now those are probably going to be producing hail. So we see a slight, a bigger slight risk, including uh, a lot of you know larger cities um, and a, a bigger area. But you know, for for that enhanced risk, you have a population over just a, just under three million people, um, including Kansas City, Missouri, Overland Park, Kansas, Springfield, Missouri. Uh, Olaf, Kansas, and Independence, Missouri. So, you know, there are a few uh, relatively largely populated areas in the in that uh, region, but, you know, I really do think that, I think if you're in extreme southwest, southeastern Kansas, you're going to see the strongest of storms, but you definitely will see the same, you know, amount and uh, severity of those storms out in 
Western Missouri. So we go to our tornado threat. You're up to a 5% risk, which is considered kind of high for uh, just one of these regular severe weather events. Um, and this, you know, this does show you that this that this uh, just system, this entire system, has the potential to create some spinning supercells. And you're up to a 5% risk, including Chicago, Illinois, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Aurora, Illinois, Naperville, Illinois, and Juliet, Juliet, Illinois, I think. I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, but look at this, Chicago, right in the middle of that 5% risk. So you got to watch out for, you know, anything can happen, and you got to watch out for some spinning supercells um, probably evening hours of tonight into, to, into tomorrow. But we go to that wind threat. This is definitely going to be the highest threat of the day, 30% with a hatch risk. It's going to be pretty crazy. I don't think you're going to get up to a 45% risk for – damning wind gusts but if you do you got to take this seriously if you're not already but you have to take this seri- seriously as it is now um but you've got a 30 percent risk for that same area of southeastern kansas and and parts of southern missouri so you can see that not only me but you know just the weather forecasters at the uh, at the storm prediction center have a lot of confidence in these thunderstorms being severe across that same area i was talking about earlier but you know, we go to the hail threat. It's slight, It's a little bit lower than that wind threat, but you still have a 15% risk and a hatch risk for that same area, except it's a little bit farther to the west, including more areas of Kansas. So we're just going to be quickly looking at the northeast now. Um, we do have a round of storms that will move through the northeast, but I'm going to have to skip ahead until uh, where these storms enter the region. Um, and, you know, starting off right now, this would about... Not right now exactly, but it's going to be about 4 p.m. today. Um, yeah, this is about 4 p.m. today, so in three hours, you're going to have some storms starting to fire off of parts of uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, parts of Maine, and especially northern Philadelphia. I think if you're looking for severe storms out here in the northeast, it's going to be in northern Pennsylvania, so you got to watch out for those storms. They could produce damaging wind gusts. Um, that's definitely possible. And I think we do have a marginal risk for this area of upstate New York and upstate of Vermont and Maine, New Hampshire, that kind of area. And that is going to be it for the rounds of storms as of today. So probably around 8, 9, maybe 7, as early as 7 p.m., you'll be done with those storms in the northeast. Then we go to tomorrow, and then we go to tomorrow's risk for severe weather. It's going to be very low. You know, we're just starting out around 10 a.m. tomorrow. You see some storms start bubbling up. Maybe some convection will be out here, um, but it doesn't look too strong until you get into those evening hours of tomorrow. You start seeing these pretty intense storms move through the upstate regions of New York, approaching uh, now a huge line of storms that will be approaching um, areas of northern Vermont. This will definitely be severe, and this is going to be a damaging wind gust producer. I mean, you can see that you've got a huge line of uh, damaging wind gusts producing storms all the way from, you know, southern Canada down into parts of uh, Vermont, into parts of New York. What the problem is with this, though, is that this is going to be impacting the same exact areas that got hit by devastating flooding um, on Sunday and Monday. So it's going to be pretty dangerous out there, including that severe weather, not only the severe weather with the damaging wind gusts, but also some more dangerous flooding. And this is just going to continue pushing towards the coast. And it starts bending out because of those southerly winds. They're going to be kind of ripping it up. And they're going to be kind of uprooting, you could say, if you want to put it that way. Um, but we're getting into the middle of the night. Uh, I guess this would be Thursday night. We're getting into the extreme early morning hours of Friday. And you still see this damaging wind line per- persist throughout the rest of the night. And this could eventually actually make it to the coast. You can see you've got in very intense and severe storms potentially moving, stretching all the way from northern uh, northern Massachusetts, the Boston area, down into parts of Connecticut uh, and southern New York State, and then also parts of northern uh, New Jersey. This does make it to Long Island, Long Island, and you guys could see maybe some hail from this, but you could definitely will see some of these storms as we will see uh, intense storms for this entire area throughout the morning, early morning hours of Friday, and then this finally makes it offshore. 
Um, but we will definitely continue watching this. I, I didn't show it on the uh, SPC, but we do already do have a Marjorie West for severe weather. If I had to guess, you know, what, what level of severe weather we would be up to um, once we get to that ex- exact day, I think we would be up to probably a slight or enhanced risk for parts of the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic. So it's going to be another one of those uh, severe weather events for the same area, except a little bit farther north, including more areas of the Northeast. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for coming to watch, and I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe out there. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.